for all of your forwarding and freight shipping needs. We at Trend Forwarding International are committed to product delivery. At Trend Forwarding, we have the much needed experience, professionalism, and due diligence in freight forwarding, shipping, and cargoes. We deliver with timeliness and precision. You can reach out to us at our Caribbean office in Trinidad and Tobago, telephone number 868-624-6250, or our Florida USA office at 305-887-9725. Dai Dawa and Interfaith Institute presents for the first time in USA Dawa and Interfaith training with education in world religions from religious professors and spiritual leaders of different faiths. This is a six month weekend course designed for brothers and sisters local, national, and international who are seeking to learn the importance of Dawa and better understanding of faith and cultures. For more information, please contact 1 800 804 0267 or 954-986-0158. You can also contact via email at alhikmat at alhikmat.com or visit our website www.alhikmat.com. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Who is Who in America on Al Hikmat TV 24-7 online. It is indeed a blessing to have with us on today's show Sheikh Ahmad Himaya. Welcome to the show, Sheikh Ahmad. Thank you for having me. And to our viewers out there, Sheikh Ahmad is from California. He has a very interesting background, very interesting background. He is the CEO and uh, founder of World Aid Council. He's a Hafiz of the Quran. Uh, he has a bachelor from Al Azhar University in Cairo. Um, he is uh, a very international Islamic scholar, and um, it is a pleasure for us to indeed have him with us on today's show. So, welcome to the show once more, uh, Sheikh Ahmad Himaya. Thank you so much. Well, you know, um, before we get into a conversation and um, the things that you do and all the, 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 the humanitarian services that you do, etc., maybe it might be very interesting for our viewers worldwide. And because um, you are all the way in California and we are here in South Florida and people are viewing this program all over the world, it will be very interesting for you to probably let our viewers know a little bit about your background, where you're from, uh, etc. Okay. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, so I, uh, I was born in Egypt, and I lived there uh, pretty much half of my life. I studied at Al-Azhar, uh, so I graduated in Islamic studies. Uh, my father and uh, my family is, uh, is uh, sc a scholar, Azharian scholar family. My father was... Uh, uh, a known, well-known scholar at Al-Azhar University as well, uh, activist. Uh, my mother as well as uh, a master at Al-Azhar. Uh, yeah, my... So, um, I served as uh, Imam for some time in Egypt and in Germany. In Egypt, I was Imam of uh, Sultan Hassan Mus, which is the one of the biggest mosques, uh, historical mosques in Egypt. And in Germany, I was uh, the Mufti and uh, arbitrator for Muslim communities as well, and Imam for yeah for some time, about five years. Uh, so that's why I speak also good German, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I uh, I moved to America, where I got my master degree in uh, comparative religion for Muslim Michigan University. And uh, yeah, and uh, 
I spent some time all, also uh, doing real estate and, uh, business, investment. So I bought a couple houses. I fixed them myself or in my own. Uh, I rented them out partly or re flipped them, stuff like this. But then I decided to leave all of that and dedicate myself completely and fully to this uh, organization where we serve people, serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with doing da'wah, uh, introducing Islam to people who never heard about it and uh, helping uh, uh, um, less fortunate community developing themselves. I, I saw in your bio, um, Sheikh Ahmad, that you did some uh, community services with the Muslim communities in Switzerland. Uh, in the in German uh, and Switzerland, I was the uh, arbitrator for Muslim uh, communities. So all cases of uh, divorce and some cases of uh, marriage and stuff like this, I, I would uh, I, I would I used to take care of it for, for Muslims. It's a kind of uh, being judge to decide in these cases, but not you can call it judge really because. It's not really, there was no really, no really court for that. But yeah, but it, uh, I did pretty much that kind of, uh, of job. Interesting, interesting. That and is. And then, uh, uh, of course, in Egypt, I was uh, the advisor of the Grand Mufti of Egypt for a couple of years as well. And, uh, but yeah. So wow, I, uh, that is interesting. Um, before we speak about your um, uh, activities with the World Aid Council and how you came about the World Aid Council and doing all these services in uh, Kenya and Indonesia, etc., let us know about the book that you have wrote right, that you have written. Can you tell us a little bit? Well, before we get to the book, let's talk about being a poet and, uh, and and being a calligraphic writer or, or, or an artist etc tell us about that a little bit about your background in that yeah i do love arts i i have the prize of the the best uh, poet at al azhar uh, so that's over 700,000 students wow the a big challenge, and I, I, I won the prize of the, the prize of the best uh, poet there. So uh, I do write po poet poem, and uh, yeah, calligraphy, Arabic calligraphy. Uh, the, I can sh share some of my works. I studied that actually professionally at uh, the school of calligraphy in, uh, in Egypt for some time. Good, good time. Yeah, so I studied that as well, and uh, painting together with uh, calligraphy, it's as art, as artwork. Yeah, so uh, in terms of the book, the book I wrote, uh, this book, Islam, a profound insight. It has a special idea, there was a special idea behind it. Uh, it's a book that introduces Islam to those who never really, who, not who never, who don't have uh, a chance to get a clear idea about what is Islam. I felt that there are many good, actually, material uh, brochures and stuff in Islam that available uh, different places you can find, but uh, there are not so many works that would explain Islam as a whole and give you a clear idea of of the content of Islam as a religion would explain it uh, completely in a in a clear manner and a moderate way without scaring people for no reason just explaining Islam as is as a message of peace and as a as a message that came from God from Allah and uh, yeah so I spent I spent five years working on this book and then uh, I gave it to a design company uh, design company in Germany. They, uh, they spent good time on it, uh, doing some artwork in it and uh, designing it in an attractive way. 
I invited some German and Austrian writers, non-Muslims, of course. Uh, I hired them for a couple months. I had them reading it, sentence by sentence. I wanted to see how a non-Muslim would react, or would feel about how we think, how we represent our religion. So I made sure there, there is no thing in this book that would cause uh, a culture shock or or scare people for no reason. Just represents Islam as is, without really uh, yeah, subjective uh, part from from me as author or something. Yeah, and then uh, it was uh, luckily published also in other languages. So this is Spanish version of it as well. And uh, we had it published in uh, German language and uh, Russian language as well, actually, and some other languages too. Yeah, so. Wow, no, that is very deep. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work, Sheikh. I, I admire. I admire your efforts, your sacrifice, and the kind of time that you would have taken to put into that book. So how, how, how did you finance the whole publication and the whole um, production, etc., of this book and publishing it, etc.? Yeah, you're right. I spent a lot of time uh, doing research in that. And... Uh, I would say I chose one of the best publishing uh, places to publish this, to print it, I mean, to print it. So I tried to give the best quality of everything, uh, I'm kind of perfectionist, to be, uh, to be honest. Uh, it's not always a good thing to be, but I think I like things to be always perfect. So I tried to do that in, with this book uh, as content and uh, also as, uh, yeah, as appearance. Subhanallah, that is really interesting. Um, I I know we have been we have been speaking for almost uh, almost fifteen minutes now, almost fifteen minutes. But we wanted to get into your background because we are on this show, Who Is Who in America. So we got to let our viewers know who, um, you know. On, on this show who's who in america we want our viewers know their background where they're from their achievements etc so they will have an idea with whom we are speaking with whom we are speaking and uh, your your achievements and your success etc um when we come back when we come back after the short break sheikh ahmed uh, we would want to talk more about your World Aid Council. I want to hear a little bit about, and I'm sure our viewers will be interested to hear about your your, your trips to Indonesia and uh, what were the other countries that you do some of this? Kenya, Dawa, Rwanda, Burundi, Rwanda, Kenya, etc. That will be very interesting for uh, viewers to hear about your journey to these different countries and um, how you went about going to these countries and what motivated you to go there and start this work of dawa to non-muslims in different areas so um we'll continue with that after the short break so to our to our viewers out there stay tuned when we come back we'll continue this conversation with uh, Sheikh uh, Ahmad uh, Himaya, a very, very, uh, very renowned and international Islamic scholar who resides in California, is originally from Egypt, and uh, is very well uh, um, versed in, in Dawa. So when we come back after the short break, we will ask him to share some of his experiences in foreign countries especially indonesia and kenya etc with his dawa work so until then inshallah stay tuned assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh assalamu alaikum allah gives hikmat wisdom to whomsoever he wills and whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder tune in to al hikmah tv for kutbas lectures and islamic reminders Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran in chapter 5, 
verse 67 Allah tells the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam bismillahir rahmanir rahim ya ayyuhar rasul ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik wa in lam taf'al fa ma balagta risalatahu very deep Allah tells the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to spread the message of the Quran and he told the Prophet and if you do not spread the message you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger so you and I are followers of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we can afford one Quran help us join in distributing the Quran so if you can't afford one Quran do it 3 dollars 10 Quran 30 dollars 100 Quran 300 dollars Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Who Is Who in America on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Once more, it is indeed a blessing to have with us on today's program Sheikh Ahmad Himaya, who resides in California here in the United States of America. He is a renowned Islamic scholar, he is the CEO and founder of world aid council he has a lot behind his name author writer lecturer die etc so welcome back to the show sheikh ahmad thank you good so very interesting we want to get into the conversation of what motivated you to go um to Indonesia and Kenya, etc., and start this work of Dawa. What was it all about? How? T tell us. I, I will be cutting in and out as you ask your questions. I mean, as you give your answers and explanation, I will ask questions here and there, uh, you know, so that um, our viewers can have a better understanding of some of the thoughts and some of the things that we have in mind and what we want the viewers to better understand. So go ahead, Shi. Okay. Uh, honestly, I, um, I thought of something that could uh, bring me the hereafter with the Sahaba, the companions of Rasulullah We see the difference in time between us and them and they see the difference in level between our faith, Iman, and their Iman. So I thought there, is, there was one other things that made them so special, which is that they brought Islam, they introduced Islam to all these nations that we see as Muslims, most of them that we see as Muslims nowadays. As soon as the Rasulullah passed away, they went everywhere with the message to explain what is Islam to people and give them chance to decide and to, to know about. So every person that became Muslim because of those Sahaba, every person who became Muslim because of them and all of the good deeds, all these Muslims did, the Sahaba will have a copy of these good deeds in their own register of Hassanat. So you can imagine how much reward from Allah the Sahaba are getting because they guided all these people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I wanted to do something similar, possibly, which is not really possible in this scale, but I said, let me do something similar that might, that might bring me also a lot of rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once I pass away as well. So, and... Uh, I saw a dream at that time when I came to that idea uh, that, that this is the hadith that لَأَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِمَّا طَلَعَتْ عَلَيْهِ الشَّمْسُ وَغَرَرَ If Allah would guide one person through you to him, to Allah, uh, it's better for you than everything on the earth. Why? Because every good deed, every salah, and zakah and uh, siyam fasting this person will do the person who guided him will have a copy of these words in his own uh, so uh, so once uh, once we pass away the only thing will 
one of the few things that will continue bringing us rewards in our graves is the uh, those people who follow who were guided to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I saw in a dream that the greatest companions, companions, Sahaba, each one owns uh, a lot, a piece of land. One lot for Abu Bakr, another one for Umar and for Uthman, one by one beside each other. And there, there was one lot for Bilal, radiallahu anhu, who used to make a then, so he used to call for Islam for the prayer. And beside the lot of Bilal, radiallahu anhu, I saw a vacant lot, a vacant land that has no owner yet. So I looked at it, that's in the dream. So I looked at it and said, oh wow, this is a good one. I want this one. So I wanted to see how can I size this lot as well. And then suddenly I see a treasure hidden actually in that vacant lot, like human being uh, out of gold. I could, was able only to see the head and it was hidden under the ground. So my, uh, my Shaykh at Al Azhar told me this is the da'wah for Islam. This land is where the message of Rasulullah did not reach yet. The other lands are, are where the Sahaba brought the message. And then there are lands still where people never heard about Islam. And this treasure, this statue out of gold is the non-Muslim. If this non-Muslim found the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through you, he's like a treasure, he's like a gold for you because all of good deeds he will ever do, he and his kids and grandkids, Allah will reward you with exactly the same. As Rasulullah said, من دعا إلى هدى كان له من الأجر مثل أجور من تبعه لا ينقص ذلك من أجور شيء. Whoever calls for guidance, Allah will reward him with the same amount of good deeds those did who, who followed him did. So I, uh, I knew this is the, something I want to dedicate my life for, to assure that after I pass away, inshallah, there will be still reward going on and adding to my scale of hasanat until the day of judgment, inshallah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. That, that is so interesting and we got to make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the hidayah the hidayah yeah. the guidance that we can also share in some of uh, these blessings that you are chosen to do and allah has chosen you uh to be able to um do this sort of um, dawah now that you have explained your motivation and what motivated you and made you interested in doing dawah to non-muslims how did you start doing it? How did you go about? How did you start getting this going? Yeah, that's really interesting because I didn't know really where to find people who never heard about Islam. So what happened is that there was a delegation of scholars from Kenya visiting uh, Al-Azhar. And I was honored to be uh, one of the of uh, scholars who were teaching them and that, giving them that courses they had. So I asked them if they really have some tribes or some native people who never heard about Islam. They said, yes, of sure, for sure we do have some tribes there and stuff. So a week later, exactly a week later, I was there in Kenya. I booked a ticket flight. I went there on my wow. own. I didn't know what, where to start, where to go. So I went to a safari company. I said, hey, uh, do you guys know where the native tribes live here in this country? So this and, is and have you have you ever some... have you ever been to Kenya before? That's the first time. No, never. So Subhanallah. Did you go alone, and Sheikh? I didn't know anybody there. Did you and go alone? I didn't know anybody. Yes, completely alone, without any knowledge of the, of the country, and without knowing anybody also there. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, so, okay. And, uh, yeah. So I kept. I went to six different safari companies. I asked each one, where do I find these native people? And I want to rent, uh, well, I want to rent a truck from you guys, and I want a translator who would join me. And everyone would say the same thing. They would say, they all, will, they all told me, look, where those native tribes live, it's not safe for you to go there 
there are nobody that's out of the middle of nowhere who cannot even trust you, get, send a truck with you. We don't know if you will come back or not. It's, and then the sick company says, yes, okay. And actually, we have an employee who comes from that tribe. We will send him with you. And they agreed to give me a truck. So we went there and uh, 360 people accepted Islam first day. Alhamdulillah. Allah so it was uh, such a very happy, uh, nice feeling for me. Uh, yeah, to, to Allah start this way. Akbar, that. Yeah, and then uh, I just started an organization there and, uh, and so on. We started, then we went further in, uh, in Rwanda and so on. So this, but this how this how was the beginning. But, but what was the reaction of these people um, in Kenya when you first met them? It's first time you're talking to them, you're talking to them about Islam, etc. How did they react? You know, honestly, I was surprised at the way they react. These people who actually didn't never go to any school or never... They are very polite. They know how to speak. They know how to lead the discussion. When you talk, they don't interrupt you. They ask questions. They are not. They are not. Uh, they ask. They know what what they what they accept. What they do not accept. And uh, not in all cases, it was successful. To be honest, so some of them said, "Yeah, you know, thank you for coming. It's a nice message, but yeah, we are not interested." <laughs> In other cases, yes, of course, they would uh, accept the message. So, yeah, but it was always uh, most, uh, almost always nice talking to them, interacting with them, and uh, yeah, generous, kind, nice people. Interesting, interesting. Tell us about Indonesia. So, what made you go to Indonesia? Now, Indonesia is a place that is well known for having so many Muslims, so many Muslims, but you went to Indonesia to give dawah to the non-Muslims in Indonesia. I mean, here is Indonesia, one of the largest, if not the largest Muslim population in the world, and you're going to that country to give dawah to non-Muslims. What uh, and how and when did you go there to do this dawah work? Okay, you are very, very right. Indonesia has a majority of Muslims, over 90%, actually. But it has uh, some areas and some islands with uh, native tribes who really never heard or received any message, simply because they live in re such remote areas that's very difficult to reach. And uh, that was the challenge. When I went there, that was September 2022, recently, actually. When I went there, the local people who knew where these people live, a uh, specific tribe that I targeted first, I wanted to visit first, they said to me, look, uh, those people, they eat humans. <laughs> oh. This is the first thing I hear. They, they eat humans. I said, well, are you worried uh, about them for me or worried about me from them? said, well, anyway, I did really, didn't. Uh, so they said, look, it's it's not really safe to go there. And uh, the most important thing is the way, uh, the way in the mountains. So those people, I went, we went with the boat and uh, yeah, we, I met some of them, but they live very scattered in, their, in, the, in the island. You find only few of them few families everywhere after long distances. So we went to different tribe on mountains. And again, uh, local people told me, look, the main thing is it's very difficult to go there. Uh, there is no roads and it's, it's not safe. And the train, it, tra it rains a lot. And if it rains, the water washes the, the little ways you can walk in. Then you can die. <laughs> The guy said, you can die. And he said, I I'm sorry, I cannot join you. I want to go, go on your own. It's, oh, cannot... subhanAllah. But I, yeah. So I said to myself, well, if we don't do it, if we don't really tell these people about Islam, who will do it? Somebody has to do it. 
That's why they are not Muslim until now in a, in, a, in a country with Muslim majority because nobody wanted to go there. So I made istikhara. Sheikh, I Sheikh, I gotta I, stop you. I gotta stop you there because this looks like an interesting journey. This looks like a very, very interesting journey. But we have been uh, talking now for the past 15 minutes and we need to go on a short break and come back and get your experience on this interesting journey. This looks like a life and death journey, a life and death experience. And I'm sure that our viewers want to digest that properly. So let's go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll continue this journey, this journey where <laughs> nobody has been before to give dawah to these people there in Indonesia. So to our viewers out there, stay tuned when we come back after the short break. We'll continue this conversation with uh, Sheikh Ahmed Himaya. And we want to learn a lot about his journey and his experience in uh, Indonesia and how he went to this land to give dawah to people who have never heard about Islam, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for kutbas, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuha Rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik, wa illam taf'al. Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ to spread the message of the Quran. And he told the Prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger. So you and I are followers of the Prophet ﷺ. If we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars. Ten Quran. Thirty dollars. A hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Who is Who in America on Al Hikmah TV 24 7. Again, it is a pleasure to have with us on today's show Sheikh uh, Ahmad Himaya from uh, California, USA, as we said in the beginning of the, the, the show. Um, he is an Islamic scholar, a renowned Islamic scholar. He's a writer, he's a publisher, he is well known for his Dawa work. Uh, now we are presently uh, discussing a little bit about his experience on his journey to Indonesia where he went to speak and give dawah to some non-Muslims in a totally different territory. So welcome back to the show, Sheikh um, Ahmed, and tell us a little bit about this journey you. now. You reached at this point where they said that uh, you're on your own. Nobody wants to go with you in this area of yes. dawah. Yeah, uh, some of my team did go with me, but some didn't want to go. So I respected that, of course. And uh, we spent three days on the way, and uh, between uh, driving a truck and motorcycles and walking for a whole day, and then uh, that day we walked. It was uh, it was really raining hard, and uh, I lost my shoes. <laughs> We ran into three, three foot deep mud and I lost my shoes. We kept going. And uh, until at some point, uh, I, I honestly, it was, it was completely wet. I was hungry. I was very tired. So I said, I made to ask you, I, I, I can't go anymore. <laughs> I was so tired and I, and all of a sudden, subhanAllah, I, a guy came out of nowhere and he's like, 
come with me. What are you doing here? <laughs> so he, he took me to his cottage there in the forests and the mountains. And, uh, but I didn't want to enter because it was completely wet. I didn't want to make his, his floors wet and stuff. So I sat in front of his cottage and I, I slipped. I slipped and when I woke so up... So just, uh, just to cut you a little bit, Sheikh, tell me. You said a few people ended up going with you. So when you went there to Indonesia, you got in contact with, with some Muslims who were willing to help you out in your journey is that correct yes you uh, as always i i build my team locally because okay. they know the place the best and the language so i uh, i visited some mosques and i talked to the imams and asked about some uh, some people who make da'wah i got in contact with them so these are and i had some students as well who studied uh, with me at al, at al azhar so uh, they were happy to help come with me as well. This, uh, this okay, journey. you mean graduates yeah. from Al Azhar that yes. were living in yeah. some, Indonesia? Some students that I used to teach at Al Azhar, they now became imams there, mashallah. And, uh, yeah, so some of them did join me, and uh, yeah, it was Allahu nice to Akbar. see them. After what? These years. <laughs> that is that is interesting. Okay, so you all went on the journey. You met this person who decided to help you. All right, and what went on after that? Yeah, so uh, we came to people after all these uh, challenges in the way. We came to that tribe, the top of mountains, and they started coming from all over the, the place, the mountains. I keep I kept seeing them coming one by one and two and five together. And then I talked about Islam, and subhanAllah, they accepted all of them accepted the message, almost all of them. And uh, the chief of that tribe told me that they had, they had a prophecy actually that matches me, that somebody like me will come to them, introduce Islam, introduce some wisdom to them. And so they were very motivated and alhamdulillah uh, yeah, accepted Islam. Of course, when, some, when people accept Islam, I always write their names down. I have a small, uh, small thing. I write all those names of every person who embraces Islam with me, because this small, uh, what they call it, <laughs> this small uh, notebook, yeah, this small notebook, worth for me millions. It's. It's very special because this book with the names of those who became Muslim right. is what I will take with me when I die. I told my family, when I die, put it with me in my grave. Allah, Allah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah then asks me about my, who's your God in the grave, who's your God, who's your religion, who's your prophet, those people will be my witness, inshallah about my religion and my deen and my prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm sorry, I'm an emotional person in general. Taqabbal Allah. Uh, no, this is really, really deep. That is a sign that it is directly from your heart, Sheikh. Um, this is uh, <laughs> this is deep. This is real, yeah. real, real haqiqat when we talk of haqiqat, By reality. Allah. And Allah surely, yeah. surely uh, has accepted you to... And Go on this no, path no. and give this um, message. Peace be upon you. Tell us, but there is very important point uh, I want to mention. Actually, if somebody accept Islam and we do not follow up with them, it's very likely that they will just stop being Muslim. It's uh, it's like a ch it's, so. Usually, we do follow up. I go back again and again to the same place. Yes. We assign imam, a local imam, to, for them to teach them how to pray and basics of Islam. And then also, very importantly, we start implementing uh, different development projects for their society, for each family, to make them able to earn money, to improve their life, to make them feel that this religion brought them blessing in their life. So we do some infrastructure work, digging wells if they need water, 
building schools in some areas and then teach them some some trade carpentry sewing uh giving them uh, fishing uh, gears give them something that they can earn money with and start a business with sometimes we give them a cow for a family the cow means milk they can eat it has been it has kids they can sell it they can make business out of it so we always try to uh, we insist on doing some projects for these new muslims to make them have better lives and improve them not only so we don't only do the da'wah work but we join it and this is what takes most of the time to make the da'wah itself doesn't take that much time but to do the other follow-up work and development work that takes a lot of time and a lot of funds funds as well so that brings me to the next point sheikh um so where do you get the funds to finance these projects as non-profit 501c3 registered here in america we depend on uh, on uh, donations from people uh, but i have to say that unfortunately so far we because people maybe don't know really us don't know us that much we don't have uh, much uh, donations and uh, I until now I mostly depend on my own personal money <laughs> so I donate I'm the, like this journey to Indonesia I donated everything for my own personal money uh, and uh, so it's uh, we do lack uh, some efforts and doing fundraising and stuff is not I'm not successful let's say or not successful in this area in specific but uh, we hope inshallah Allah will make it easy for us and uh, with the support of our Muslim brothers and sisters inshallah we can continue with this inshallah of course of course that is indeed um uh, that's incredible that is truly incredible that kind of mission and experience that you have gone through allahu akbar i'm amazed i'm very amazed sheikh uh, ahmed uh, you know, make dua that Allah gives me the hidayah that uh, one day I can join you on these trips to Kenya and to um, Indonesia. You have the hidayah. You have the hidayah, <laughs> alhamdulillah. Make dua that Allah, uh, that the hidayah continues with you, inshallah, and uh, you, inshallah, join us someday. We'll have the honor of having you with us, inshallah. I mean, I mean, we need the dua. You make dua for me that Allah make it possible for me to be able to join with you. I love this, this dawah to these um, people in these different areas uh, who have not known about Islam. Wow, what a, what, what an opportunity for blessings. Subhanallah, you know this is this is really really amazing. Um, talking about um, the, the the so the World Aid Council is that organization that you have um, that you have established here in the United States of America now as a vehicle that would be able to raise funds to support these dawah trips in these foreign countries to new Muslims. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, we do have websites. And we do accept those donations through our website as well, which is uh, aidcouncil.org. Uh, aid, A I D, council.org. Uh, so, inshallah. Excellent, uh, excellent. So, people can even contact us at Al Hikmat office and we will um, let them yes, know sure. how to get in sure. contact with you and how inshallah, they can yes. um, make arrangements who would like to donate and contribute towards your effort sure. and the world aid council etc that will be really 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 phenomenal it will be wonderful good opportunity for people to get blessings for you for us for everybody to share in Amen. the opportunity of blessings inshallah but most of all i need you Amen. to make that dua for me that Allah makes things easy for me and open the pathways that I can start to join you and join the World Aid Council in um, getting some of this uh, Dawa mission going, inshallah. All right. One question I want to ask you, Sheikh. One question I want to. Yeah, you were saying, I, I said, make Dawa for me, and you said, Amin, right? Amin, yes. I said, it would be my, our pleasure and honor to have you with us. Amin, Amin. Yes, Allah, it's. All in Allah's hands, inshallah. 
Um, tell us, with this sort of um, interesting thing, I mean, I don't know how I'm going to go in those mountains and that flood area <laughs> and walk through those bushy areas. That sounds a little scary. But tell me something. Um, uh, uh, tell me, what is one of the most difficult or dangerous situation you experience on some of these journeys? Because you're talking about Rwanda, Kenya, Indonesia, uh, the native tribes, the villages. Share with us an experience uh, of one of the most dangerous or scary moments on these journeys. Okay, uh, there was one river in, in Kenya that we, I hear there is a tribe behind the river, that really native tribe, we didn't hear about Islam before. So I decided to go there and so we had to cross the river. So the locals told me, don't, don't try it. It's dangerous and it's, it's not something you can do. As I looked in the river, it didn't look, look really that serious or deep. So I said, look, I will do it and I'll show you how to do it. So I took off my, my upper clothes. I started walking in the river and it, it, it took me with it. The currents was so powerful. It took me right away with it. But they saved me. Luckily, they saved me in the last moment. I was about to die there, to be honest. So they saved me in the last moment. And uh, so we couldn't cross it. <laughs> Subhanallah. A, yeah, and another another situation. Our truck broke up in the middle of nowhere, in jungles, in uh, somewhere in Africa, and it was an area with lots of lions going walking around. <laughs> so, so I said to the driver, "Okay, what what can we do?" It was night also. It was late night, and uh, there is no signal in the phone. You can't call anybody to ask for any help. So I asked the driver, "What could we do?" He said, well, if we step out and push the truck, possibly, possibly it will run again. I said to him, look, you know very well there are lines walking around here. I don't want to be a dinner for a line tonight just to push the truck. So we ended up actually just uh, sleeping in the truck until the morning. I said, at least let's wait until there are some light, then we can see if the line is a line is coming, then we run back to the track, whatever. So, it, uh, yeah, so we ended up in the track. So, and then in the night, about like 2 a.m., an elephant came. <laughs> like he's, what, what, what are these guys doing here in the middle of... The... So an elephant ca came and kept walking around the track. It was so scared because if this elephant attack, attacked us, we would have to run. And then well, the lions would take care of the rest. <laughs> wow. But Alhamdulillah, Allah saved us and the uh, elephant ended up just keep going and so, left us alone. Sheikh, that sounds like a movie. That sounds like a movie. You know, when I went to Africa a couple months ago, we went on the safari. <laughs> I know. I mean, you're talking about the middle of the night. We went in the day, in the day, driving around the jungle areas to go visit all these the giraffe and the lions and the tigers and elephants etc and that was pretty scary so i can imagine in the middle of the night 2 a.m an elephant coming by lions around it takes a lot of iman for you to do that i tell you what's know. funny funny thing not really scary thing funny is the thing i wanted to go to use toilet the next night actually we were still in the middle of jungle of the forest so I wanted to go for a toilet. So the guys with me said, okay, just go in the middle of the bushes somewhere and do it. <laughs> I said, said, okay, is there anything I need to worry about? This is just, uh, it's not, there's not really anything that's, that's uh, scary. Just only some uh, snakes, they are poison snakes, but they are not that scary. Just don't step on them. I said, the problem is night. How can I see them? My phone died out, the battery died, so there's no way to recharge it even. I said, the problem, I cannot see them. So the guy said, okay, I can come with you. I said to him, shut up. You want to come later and tell people that the sheikh was uh, too scared to go to the toilet alone and they had to join him. <laughs> so I just, I went, 
alone there and Allah saved me. So it wasn't that. Uh, but it was so dark. I, if I put my hand like this, I can't see it. And, uh, there in the forest, there is, it was so dark. But Allah saved us. So, uh, Sheikh, uh, listen, that, <laughs> that is phenomenal. <laughs> I Listen, I think uh, that kind of journey I'm scared of. I will have to get involved in other aspects of the mission, but <laughs> wow, that is really, really like a movie. It, I mean, when I say movie, you know, in a movie, it's not real. <laughs> in many movies, it's not real. <laughs> and to hear you saying that as reality, Allahu Akbar. But you know, the bottom line is Allah accept your effort. That's a struggle. I mean, uh, That's a struggle. I mean, uh, I, I I would be very scared. Yeah. I, I would be totally yeah. scared to go undergo undergo that kind of mission. But you know, it's nice to know we're talking to you. Uh, the water took you away. You didn't drown. Allah saved you. In the middle of the jungle, elephants, snakes, lions. Subhanallah. Listen, you get so much more blessings and so much more uh, blessings from Allah for what you have done. We are very fortunate to have you on this show. Uh, who is who in America on Al-Hikmah TV. It's really a blessing to have you and for you to share your experience with us. Listen, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure, inshallah, that our viewers worldwide would have definitely benefited from listening to your experience and the struggle and the sacrifice that you go through to well, promote and um, spread the message of the Quran, Allahu Akbar. Well, we have come to the end of the show, Sheikh. Time is gone. We have come to the end of the show, 45 minutes uh, uh, of talk on your journey and dawah. What do you have to say in the next couple of seconds as we conclude the show, inshallah? Our life is short. And uh, we can spend this short life in a way that would give us endless reward after we pass away and would make us very special to Allah that He would bring us together with His Prophet وسلم, in, for the paradise, inshallah. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. So, Jazakallah, Sheikh uh, Ahmad. It's a blessing, Sheikh Ahmad, to again have you with us. And to our viewers out there, it was really a blessing, a pleasure to be talking to Sheikh Ahmad Himaya, who is uh, an Islamic scholar and a renowned Islamic scholar from Al Azhar and Egypt. Uh, and a man who is experienced in the line of Dawa, the CEO and founder of World Aid Council. It was indeed a blessing to have him on the show. So always stay tuned to Alikma TV and uh, feel free to contact us uh, if you want to know more about World Aid Council. Feel free to contact us here at Al Hikmat office, inshallah. Until then, Again, always stay tuned to Alikma TV 24 7 online. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dai Dawa and Interfaith Institute presents for the first time in USA Dawa and Interfaith training with education in world religions from religious professors and spiritual leaders of different faiths. This is a six month weekend course designed for brothers and sisters local, national, and international who are seeking to learn the importance of Dawah and better understanding of faith and cultures. For more information, please contact 1 800 804 0267 or 954 986 0158. You can also contact via email at alhikmat at alhikmat.com or visit our website www.alhikmat.com. Linda M. Kaplan, PA, an immigration law firm. Over 40 years of legal services in immigration and naturalization matters. Contact her at 305-670-7665. Once again, 305-670-7665. Or email her at lk at lindacaplan.com or visit her website lindacaplan.com. You can also contact for more details the Al Hikmat office at 954 986 0158 
or 1-800-804-0267. You can also reach out to them via email at alhikmat at alhikmat.com, the website www.alhikmat.com, and visit the Alhikmat TV www.alhikmattv.com. Glass Supplies, specialized in French doors, windows, aquariums, putty work, and more. 45 Garth Road, Princess Town. For more information, please call at 1-868-736-6204. That is 1-868-736-6204. Or message on WhatsApp at 1-868-732-2302. Again, one 868 Two seven two two three zero two, or email at jumasglass seventy three at gmail dot com. <laughs>